welcome to Soft Education TV. Hi, my name is Jackson, and today we're going to look at just one of the many things we can create using the new Lego Robot Inventor kit. Now, I'm a big fan of Lego and using Lego Mindstorms uh, in education projects. It helps young learners build 21st century skills such as creativity, logical thinking, critical thinking, and problem solving. So, let's get on with the show. I have a spin ball here, which I created with the Lego set you see behind me. I built this model inspired by the funky spin art you see online. Now, this is just a small prototype, but it works in very much the same way. So this simple model rotates around an axis and uses a bevel gear to switch from a horizontal to a vertical axis. The purpose is to allow me to create beautiful spiral art. This whole model is controlled from the program block here. The left and right buttons control when the board starts spinning and stops. Over here, we have an iPad with the Mindstorms app installed and ready to go. Using the Bluetooth function, we are able to program the block using Scratch and test out our program. So this simple model rotates around an axis and uses bevel gears to switch between a horizontal to a vertical axis. The purpose is to allow me to create beautiful spiral art. Okay, to build our spinning platform, we will need a motor, a programming block, uh, we need some Technic beams, and we have different sizes, here, 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 and these will form the base. We have a plate for us to house it on. We have some more beams. We have some pegs. We have some longer pegs. And we also have um, the special ones that are pegs on one side and an axle on the other. Um, we have a small two axle. We have an axle with a flat end. And then we have a compound gear, a bevel gear, one wee bushing, and also um, this round piece that we're going to use to connect our base or our, our platform to our axle. Okay, to start off, we're going to grab our motors and we actually need to lift this off the base plate a little bit, otherwise, it's going to start catching on. Um, some of the other pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the long pegs to attach these two beams and these are nine nine uh, whole beams, okay? Or nine bump beams rather. So to do this we're going to actually put the short end into the bottom of our motor in the four corners. So we're going to do that like so. Now the reason why we're going to put the short ends in is because we need it to go through not only the beam but then into our base plate. So now here we are, I'm going to put them in and this is a very interesting build and a great way for children to learn problem solving. Now once we've done that we're going to also add in our two axle into the center of our motor and this is going to transfer the motion from the motor to our compound gear. We're going to add that here. Whoop. There we go. Now this whole unit will sit right on our base plate right here as you can see. Next up we're going to try and add this T-beam and this T-beam is basically going to just sit here and house our vertical axis um, or our vertical axle and we're going to transfer the movement from a horizontal 
motion or horizontal rotation into a vertical one and that will allow us to create a spinning platform so to attach this we're just gonna we'll save on the pegs we'll just use two black pegs here and we're just gonna place this right next to our motor here like so and now we should be able to put our axle with the flat base here so the reason we've chosen this one is that it won't go all the way through and it will stop okay but it only works one way like this okay so we put it through the base and to stop this from falling out we're going to add our bevel gear it's important to put this upside down so the teeth face down and it locks in with the gear below with the compound gear and now this is going to be the mechanism that transfers our motion or our movement from a horizontal to a vertical rotation and now on top of that we're going to build our plate now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bushing just a small hard bushing is fine um, it's not really necessary because this plate, as you can see, this round plate, um, it also has a um, a slot for an axle, a, cr um, a cross slot, so it's pretty stable, but the bushing just gives us a little bit more stability. And then we're going to put two black pegs into the holes okay, of the peg plate, like so. Okay, so now we're gonna build the platform. And as you all know, with Lego, it's very difficult to get circular shape. So what we have here is a, a range of different beams ranging from five to 13 bumps or 13 holes. And we're gonna arrange them with the largest in the middle and they get smaller as they go out to give us a somewhat circular shape, okay? We also have two other beams set aside and we're going to use these like cross beams to just lock everything in place. Now, to start off, we're going to just take one and we're actually going to put a peg in every single hole. And what this is going to do is help us lock the majority of the beams in place, but not all of them. Now, after we've done this on our second one, uh, we can reduce the number of pegs we use, um, seeing as we're not going to need to lock every single uh, beam along the way in. So, just like this. And if I have everything lined up properly, I should be able to insert them all into the hole at the right spot, like so. And this might take a little bit of wiggling, but we should eventually be able to start getting them in. So let's try getting these ones in first. Let's take that out, and there we go. It's going. So we've got most of our plate locked in, and now we can just kind of add the ones that we didn't get through on, making sure that. Um, each one is sort of symmetrically lined up with the others. Now, as you can see, the reason we have two beams is once we get to the last two, the beam below is too small to lock in every single beam. If you have longer ones at home, you could probably do this with one, but unfortunately we are limited with just the one set so what we're going to do is then use this beam and just lock in the rest now i'm actually going to lock in the first three pins because the the ends are a little bit unstable and then after that i'm just going to start skipping i'm going to add two alternate alternating holes here like so and i'm going to actually lock from the opposite end this time and I'll try and lock it in from here and what this is going to help us do is to add a bit more stability to 
our base plate. Now, as you can see, it takes a little bit of fiddling, but we should be able to get them in like so. So as you can see, all of our beams lined up like so, and then locked in place at the end. Now you'll see with any beams with only one point of contact, they're loose. So that is why we also have these threes and we're just gonna use this to lock in the last beam and add an extra point of contact on the inside. And that way that should give our base plate a lot more stability and it's not going to come apart or move. And then the final step of this is to actually add a blue peg right in the central hole like so and we're going to stick our piece of paper onto that. You don't have to have this, you can actually just blue tack your piece of paper onto this anyway, um, but we're just going to add it for style. There we go. Now the last bit is to now put this onto our mechanism. So line it up in the middle and just place it onto the pegs and there we go. And there we have it. Plug it in the thing to our unit and we then code. Okay, so once you get onto the coding page, don't forget to connect your device via Bluetooth. And to do that, we click the button in the top right hand corner. And again, on the hub, we need to hold down the button on the hub until it makes a sound. Then we click connect on the app and it should appear as an accessory. Once you're connected, you're ready to start coding. Right, very simple program. So when we start play on our program, we're gonna first set our motor speed to 75%, which is the default. And that is fast enough for our purposes. But we also wanna be able to control our platform and rather than stop and starting our program from the app itself, we wanna be able to control it on our block using the left and right keys. So we're gonna add another event and we're gonna start off with the left button. So when the left button is pressed, we're gonna want this whole thing to start. But we want our program to keep running. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a repeat until. So we want motor A to start moving. So when the left button is pressed, we're gonna add um, motor A to start. Now we want it to end once we click the right button. Rather than using an event, we're gonna go down to sensor and we're gonna use the right button on our device as a, um, a sensor. So when the right button is pressed, we're gonna ask our motor to stop. And there we have it, a very simple program. When we're ready, we click play to load it up onto our device. And now you can see if I click the left button, it will rotate. And when I click the right button, it stops. All right, now our last step is to just attach our paper. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue tack to just prevent the paper from sliding. And we punched a little hole in this and we're just gonna stick it on there and then ready to plug and play. So here we have a simple rotating machine. We use gears to transfer movement, but as a mechanical part, they can also speed and slow things down. Can you think of any other machines that might be built in a similar way? What about some of your favorite theme park rides like a merry-go-round or the teacups? And how about a couple of inventions like a pottery wheel, a mixer, a retro CD player, car wheels, and even a fan. From everyone here at Soft Education TV, thank you very much for watching our video and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.